Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. In my last video, I did a manual install of Arch Linux without encryption using the August 1st Arch Linux ISO. And I did my post installation differently. I didn't use my post installation scripts to automate my post installation. I just did a manual post installation with the KDE Plasma desktop environment and a few apps like Firefox, HTOP, and a few others. So today I made a brand new install of Arch Linux, a base install of Arch Linux with root and no user or apps. And today I'm going to use my post install scripts. So let's get to it. So I'm in a virtual machine of Arch Linux. It's a, a replica of the base install that I did in my last video before my post installation. Okay. And it, this one is not encrypted. Now I just want to say that in my last video, I did not encrypt it. And this one is not encrypted, but you really should encrypt your installs. It's a, it's a lot safer. And I think in my next video, not this one, but my next video, I'll probably go through a manual install with encryption. Okay, so like I said, this is a replica of my uh, base install of my last video. And first, I'm going to do a set font tier dash 132 B. Ah, that's better. If I do an LSBLK, you can see I gave this a 50 gig hard drive. The boot partition is one gig. And the main partition is 49 gig. I put two kernels in here, the stable kernel and the long-term support kernel. And since I made this base install, which I did this morning, I didn't do anything with it. So the first thing I want to do, and I already showed this in my last video, and I've showed this in previous videos as well. When I change the Pac-Man configuration file on the install, it doesn't stick through to the final result of the install. So I want to go back and change it. Etsy, Pac-Man, period, conf. And I just want to go down and I want to delete the hashtag and delete that hashtag. I want to do parallel downloads and I want to do verbose package list, which probably doesn't work good in the TTY because my font is too large. Okay. I'm going to save the file. Now I just want to show you that my mirror list stuck. So I'm going to do uh, them. Etsy, Pac-Man, D, mirror list. And there it goes. There's the three mirrors that I used. Now, like I said, this is a replica of the base install of from the last video. Okay. Now let's just see if there's an update. Now I did this install uh, early this morning, and now it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. Let's see if there's any updates to do. Pacman dash s y u, and there's nothing to do. And usually from morning to afternoon, there will be updates to do in Arch Linux, but I don't have hardly anything installed yet. I just have a base install. There's no apps, there's no web browser or anything like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to make a user. I'm going to do a user add dash m. Mench. I'm going to give Mench a password. I'm going to do password without the O and without the R. Password for Mench. I'm going to put the password in. I'm going to repeat the password. And now Mench has a password. Now I'm going to give Mench sudo privileges. I'm going to do Pacman. Well, I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> I'm going to do Vim Etsy. Sudoers. I'm going to scan down. And like I said in my last video, and I say this in most of my videos, most of my installed videos, that is, let's just scan down first. Let's do uh, set and new. Okay. All Linux distributions make the user part of the wheel group. And probably all Linux YouTubers will tell you to make the user part of the wheel group. So what they do is they make the user part of the wheel group and then they uncomment 
line 114 or they make line 114 activated okay so whoever is a member of the wheel group has all privileges all 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 privileges i don't do it that way i'm unorthodox and i don't make my user part of the wheel group and i don't uncomment line 114 because it's just me using the computer or me using the virtual machine. Now, I think the wheel group is good. If you're an administrator and you are you have, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 users that are using the system and some people you want to give sudo to and some people you don't want to give sudo to, then it's fantastic to use the wheel group. But if it's just you or your spouse, you can do it this way. And this is the way I do it. It works just as well, but it's unorthodox. I'm probably the only one doing it. Or I'm the only one on YouTube doing it. And the Linux distributions don't do it my way, but I'm going to do it my way. Because I did it my way. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So, I don't make Mensch part of the wheel group, and I don't uncomment line 114. What I'm going to do is copy root, and I'm going to delete root, and I type in Mench. So now I'm giving Mench all privileges. But Mench is still going to have to use sudo. Okay. I'm going to save the file. And I'm going to clear the screen. So now I'm going to exit. And I'm going to log in as Mench. Put Mench's password in. Now I'm logged in as Mench. Now, I'm going to do something I didn't do in my last video. And that's this. In the last video, I installed... KDE Plasma Desktop Environment, Firefox, and a few other apps. And when I installed the KDE Plasma Desktop Environment, I did it manually. I didn't use any of my post-install scripts. So when I did it manually, I installed KDE Plasma Desktop Environment. It made a configuration folder for me in my home directory. But when I use my post-install scripts, I manually make a configuration folder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in MK. Let's just clear the screen. Oops. Control L. I'm going to type in MKDIR. MKDIR stands for make directory. Leave a space. I'm going to type in period because it should be a dot folder. And dot folders are hidden unless you put another command in to see them. I'm going to do make here space dot config okay now i'm going to clear the screen let's see if it's there ls oh it's not there but let's do ls dash a there it is there you can see it in the blue on the far right dot config okay now in this video and in my last video and as a matter of fact in all my videos i installed git now if you didn't install git then you're going to have to do sudo pacman s git okay put your password in and here it says you can see it says reinstalling well i'm not going to reinstall it i already have it so i'm going to say no but like i said in all my videos i i always install git in the tty when i'm making the video okay or when i'm making the base install I already have Git installed, so now I'm going to download my GitLab repository. I'm going to type in git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash artibus1 slash mench dot git. Okay, so that's the command there. And if you can't remember the command, that command is in the show notes of all my videos. I'm going to hit enter and it's downloading my GitLab repository and it's done. So now my GitLab repository is downloaded, but it's not installed. It's not affecting my system or changing anything in my system. So if you want, you can download my GitLab repository and look at it. And if you don't want to use it, hey, that's fine. No harm, no foul. If you don't want to use it, it's not affecting anything in your computer until you install things, until you run the scripts. And of course, you can look at my GitLab repository at, from going online. 
you know, in your web browser, you can go online and view and see what's inside my GitLab repository as well, which I showed in my last video. Okay. So let's go into it. Let's clear the screen. Let's ls it. Now you see I have a mensh directory. That's my GitLab repository. Let's cd into it. Let's ls it again. Oops. So now I have these folders. So I'm going to, if you see on the far left, there's an Arch folder. So I'm going to cd into Arch. I'm going to ls it. Now if you see on the far left in the column, now you see I'm in a TTY, so I can't use my mouse to point. <laughs> the mouse doesn't work. Okay. So in the column on the far left, not it, almost halfway down, but not exactly halfway down, a bit more towards the top. There's an app, or there's a file, not an app. There's a file called autoapp.sh right there. So I'm going to vim into it just to show you what's inside of it. Vim auto. Okay, so this is a, a script. And when I run the script, it's going to take maybe at the very most five minutes. It's going to install all my favorite apps. Window managers and desktop environments. And all the apps that help my computer to run. And for instance, and let's do um, set and you. That's better. If you look at line seven, that's the awesome window manager. Line 10 and 11 and 12 are the utilities to run Bluetooth. Line uh, 14 is celluloid. It's a video. It's a program for watching videos. Line 15 is cinnamon, the cinnamon desktop environment. Line 16 is Clam AV. It's an antivirus. Line 17 is Clip Grab. It's a program that allows you, when you're watching a video online, it grabs the video and downloads it into your hard drive so that you own the video. That's Clip Grab, line 17. Line 18 is a music player that works in the terminal. Now you see all those cup files, like line 19, 20, 21, 22. Those are files that help your printers to run if you use a printer. And FMPEG is uh, something that helps your music and videos to work. And of course, I have Firefox. Line 26 is Firefox. Line 27 is the ad blocker for Firefox. Uh, line 30 is GIMP for making my thumbnails. I have GNOME Calculator, GNOME Disk Utility, GNOME Screenshot, GNOME System Modener, um, HP Lip on line 36. That's also for helping your printers to work. And of course, line 37 is HTOP. Line 40 is Caden Live. Uh, some of the other files are for your media to make sure that your media works properly. I have the full LibreOffice suite. I have LightDM Greeter. Uh, LX Appearance is on 49 for setting your dark themes and different themes. I have NeoFetch on line 54, OBS Studio line 57, PC Man FM on line 60, that's my file manager. I have Print Manager, that also helps you to control your printing. Paul Sadio, and line 66 is the Qtile Window Manager. Line 68 is Remina, that's a program for remoting into other systems. Rhythm Box is a Rhythm box is a music player that works in the GUI. And line 73 is on complicated firewall. It's the firewall. And of course, I have Xterm as line 79, and I install Zesh. Because I don't really like the Bash shell, I love the Zesh shell. And normally, I don't... Oh, and I also have two. If you look on line 72, line 72 is the Tor web browser. Or surfing the web anonymously. Now, I don't usually take so much time to go through this list. I always show this list on my videos, but really quickly. This time I took a lot more time to go through it and explain what these files are. So, this is a script. 
and you don't have to run the script, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get out of here now. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to type in. So this script is going to install the awesome window manager, the Qtel window manager and the cinnamon desktop and Firefox and all my favorite apps, music apps, video apps, or whatever. Okay. So to run the script, you have to make sure you're in my arch folder and you're going to do period slash auto. Okay. Like that. And we're going to hit enter asking for my password. So I'm going to put my password in and it's going to hit enter, 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 and enter. So it's installing 657 packages. So this is going to take maybe five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. So don't go away. Okay, it finished. Now it started at 53 and it's now 56. So it only took three minutes, three minutes to install all my post installation apps and window managers, desktop environments, and so forth. That's pretty fast. So now I'm going to clear the screen, ls it. And now there's another thing I want to run and it's called run configs. It's on the right side, the right column, halfway down it's called run configs. I'm going to vim into it just to show you what's in it. Vim, there's no period there, run configs. Okay. So this is also a script and what it's going to do is let's do a sent and you, okay, that's better. So line five is going to copy my XNRC RC file, my X resources, my Zesh configuration file, and my I'm wheel configuration file into your home directory. If you run the script, if you don't run a script, it won't do anything to your computer. And I'm wheel is a program that helps your mouse wheel. So you can change the speeds of your mouse wheel. And line seven is going to copy three wallpapers into your home directory. Line nine is going to copy my awesome window manager and my Qtile window manager configuration files into your home directory. So when we load up the awesome window manager or the Qtile window manager, we won't be uh, using the default ones. Okay. Line 11 is going to copy my light DM configuration files into the system. So the auto app that we just ran, it installed light DM. Light DM is the display manager or the login manager that I use. And this line 11 is going to install the configuration files for it. Line 13. Now too, even with this file, and all my install videos, I quickly go through this file and quickly show you what's in it because I don't like my videos to be too long. I'm trying to keep them as short as possible. But today I'm going to take more time and explain what's in here instead of quickly running through it. Now my installed script installed Vim and line 13 is my Vim RC file because I changed the configuration file a bit. Line 15 is going to copy my Zash RC file into root. Line 17, I don't even know if line 17 works anymore, but it's going to help some of the uh, dark themes run better. I'm not even sure if that line works anymore, but I still have it in there. It doesn't harm your computer. A line 19 is going to, so in my auto app install script, I installed Bluetooth service. Line 19 is going to turn on the Bluetooth service and make sure it's turned on every time you boot up into your system. And line 21 is going to make sure that LightDM, the display manager or the login manager is always turned on when you log into the system, when you reboot, when you reboot into the system. Okay. And in my install script, it installed uncomplicated firewall. So the last paragraph, line 23 to 27, it's going to turn on the firewall. It's going to program the firewall to deny all incoming and allow all outgoing. And it's going to make sure that the firewall is always turned on whenever you reboot your system. Okay, now you don't have to run the script, but I'm going to. I'm going to quit out of there. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to do 
Now remember, you have to be in the correct folder to do this. You have to be in my mensh directory and in my arch directory. And actually, you could just do this, pwd. So you can see where we are. I'm in my home directory. Now, I should have named my uh, GitLab repository something other than mensh, because it makes it a little confusing. So I'm in home, mensh, because mensh is the user of this virtual machine. But then I'm also in mensh directory because the second mensh is my GitLab repository. I'm in mensh and I'm in arch. I'm in the arch folder. I probably should have uh, named my GitLab repository something else. Anyways, so that's, that's the path that we're in. So you have to be in the right folder. And we're going to do period slash run configs. Now this is going to take like a second to run. Oh, wait, yeah, I put my password in. And that's done. Now I'm going to clear the screen. Now I'm going to test it to see if my Zesh configuration file is working. I'm going to type in Zesh. And actually, I'm going to CD out of here, just back to home. And I'm going to type in Zesh. And I know from the way it looks that my Zesh configuration file is working. Now I'm going to switch into root. And I want to see if my Zesh configuration file is working in root. So I am going to type in Zesh now that I'm in root. And it's working in root. So now that I'm in root, I'm going to go and change my password configuration file. And I don't have to use sudo because I'm in root. I'm going to do vim password without the O and without the R. And I made a mistake here because I got to do. Um, Etsy password, and there shouldn't be a space there. It's got to be like that. I'm going to vim into Etsy password without the O and without the R. I'm going to hit enter. And the reason why is that I don't like using bash. I like to use Zesh. And right now, bash is the default shell. I'm going to make Zesh the default shell. Now, there's another way to make Zesh the default shell or whatever uh, shell you happen to be using. There's a command that you can type in the terminal, but I don't like it. I like doing it this way. I think this way is easier. You just have to be careful that you don't mess up this file. I'm going to go line number one. I'm going to go to the end. And this is root. And I'm deleting that and I'm typing in Zesh. Then I'm going to do a search for Mench. Now we're at, on line 19 at Mench. And I'm going to go to the end of the line and type in Zesh. And I'm going to save the file. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to reboot. And when I reboot, Zesh should be my default shell and it should take me right into LightDM, the login manager. And there we are. We're in LightDM. So now if you go up here, I don't know if you ever use LightDM, you have this. Uh, Thing up here, click it on. So you can see I installed the Cinnamon Desktop, I installed Qtile, and I installed Awesome. Now, when you install the Cinnamon Desktop in pure Arch Linux, it's really ugly. But you can easily configure it and change it and make it look nice and make it look just as nice as, as it does in Linux Mint. Because the Linux Mint people are the developers that made the Cinnamon Desktop and maintain it. So like I said, in Arch Linux, when you log into Cinnamon, it's really ugly, but it's easy to configure it and make it look nice in the GUI. I'm not going to bother logging into it. So let's go into Qtile. Did I click it on right? Yes. So we're going to log in now. We won't be logging into the default Qtile window manager. We're going to be logging into Qtile with my configuration file. Okay. And the mouse doesn't work in here. Well, you can use the mouse to change workspaces. So if you see here, down here, there's nine workspaces. But you can't use the mouse to open everything, but I have all my own key bindings in here. So like uh, Windows key F opens up Firefox. And as you can see, this is Firefox. And I have uh, the ad block installed, uBlock origin. And to close it, well, let's just do a shift, Windows key C will close it. And I forgot to do an HTOP. Let's do an HTOP. And we're running at 304 megabytes of RAM. 
So in this virtual machine, I gave it four processors, four gigs of RAM, and no swap, because I don't use swap. Don't believe in it. So we're running on 300 megabytes of RAM. Now let's close it. And I'm going to get out of there. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go into the awesome window manager. Put my password in. And let's do HTOP again. So now we're running at 323 megabytes of RAM. That's not bad. Now, in this computer, I installed two kernels, the long-term support kernel and the stable kernel. And this part I showed in my last video, but I'm going to show it again in here. In my last video, I did it in the TTY, but here I'm going to do it in the terminal. I'm going to open up uh, my terminal, Xterm, and let's see what kernel we're in now. Let's do U name dash R. We are in the long-term support kernel. Now, when you're booting up, if you have more than one kernel installed, when you're booting up, you have five seconds, or it's going to automatically log into whatever kernel happens to be at the top of the list. So you have five seconds to hit your arrow buttons. And if you hit your arrow buttons, the countdown will stop. Then you can go to advance and pick the kernel you want to log into. I'm going to change that to 10 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to do a sudo vim etsy default slash rub. I think that's it. Well, it's going to ask for my password. So I'm going to put my password in. It's line three. So if you see line three, it says timeout equals five. I'm going to change that to a 10. Now, by changing it to a 10, it's going to take a little longer to boot into your system. It's going to take 10 seconds. But you can bypass that 10 seconds. When you see the 10 second countdown, just hit enter and it will override it. Or you can hit your arrow keys and it will pause it so you can advance into, go into advanced mode and pick whatever kernel you want. So I'm going to change this to 10. Okay. So we changed it to 10. I'm going to save the file. So this is, I don't use the bash shell here. I'm using the zest shell. I have a lot of aliases in my zest shell. If you don't know what an alias is, an alias is, uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to vim into zesh rc. And let's just scan down. Just in case you don't know what an alias is. So an alias, and you can make an alias in the bash shell or in the zest shell. So in my zest shell, I made a lot of aliases that are convenient for me. So for instance, in my install video from yesterday and in previous install videos, you see when we make, when I want to make grub, I have to type in this whole command grub make config dot O, not a zero, boot grub grub dot CFG, line 248. When I'm in the terminal, if I just type in MK grub, it runs that whole command. So instead of having to type out that whole command or having to remember that whole command, all I got to do is type in mkgrub and it runs that command for me. So that's what an alias is, just in case you don't know what they are. They're shortcuts. So when I change the seconds for grub, it won't take effect until I make grub. Instead of typing out that whole command, I'm going to use my uh, alias, mkgrub. Oh, it's asking for my password. And we're generating grub. There we go. Now I'm going to reboot. There you go. You see the seconds? Look at that. See, it's running down. So if I use my arrow, it pauses it. And I can go to advanced options. So now I have the LTS kernel. So whatever kernel has the top, so whatever kernel is at the top is the one that's going to log into automatically. And I'm going to use my arrow down and I'm going to go into this one, the stable kernel. So that's how that 10 second thing works. It's very good to change it from five seconds to 10 seconds. And if it's running down to 10 seconds and you don't feel like waiting, you can just hit the arrow button and it will boot into your system. Okay, so now I'm going to type my password in. 
Now we're on a fresh install without opening up any programs. And I'm going to open up HTOP. Let's go to HTOP. Look at that. Now we're running at 241 megabytes of RAM. And of course, I forgot to turn on my uh, face. I always do this. There we go. I'm back. So we're on a fresh install, a fresh boot, and we're running at 251 megabytes of RAM. Isn't that amazing? And while I'm in the awesome, what I'm going to do is hold down the Windows key and hit the P, and I'm going to type in custom. And I'm going to click on Materia Dark. And icon theme is Papyrus Dark. And I'm going to apply it. And I'm going to click on my PC Man FM. Look at that. That's my file manager. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is uh, open up a terminal, which is super key enter to open up your terminal. Or you could use your mouse and open up. Uh, Xterm is my terminal. Okay, see here, Xterm. And I'm going to do sudo pacman s plasma and gnome. <laughs> Let's live it up. Okay, put my password in and I'm going to enter. I'm going to hit enter again, hit enter again, hit enter again, and now it's installing 335 packages. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> I'm going to pause the video, but this isn't going to take long, believe me. Okay, finished. Now, I forgot to look at the time when I started to download GNOME and KDE. Uh, I think it took about three minutes. For sure, it took less than five minutes. Okay. And I don't know if any of you noticed the time, but uh, I didn't. I didn't look at it. So it's done. So now what I'm going to do is close this. Well, let's close this. Log out. Let's log out. Let's quit. Let's go here. Oh, now look at all this. <laughs> now for some reason, LightDM duplicates all the GNOME stuff but it doesn't duplicate the, pl the plasma stuff so first i'm going to log into gnome let's put my password in and i'm not going to give you a tour of gnome i'm not going to show you how to use gnome i'm not going to show you how i like to configure gnome to my liking this is just for installation so let's skip the tour so this is gnome oh what i'm gonna the only thing i'm gonna do is fix the display settings because it's a virtual machine, my display is off. So I'm going to go to uh, 1360 by 768 and apply it. Keep the changes and close it. Okay. Let's just do a search for HTOP. Wow. It's running high. Well, I don't even want to do that. Let's do a search for um, Xterm. Let's maximize it. Let's do HTOP there. And now it's running at 1.29 gigabytes. And there is a way to uh, make it run. It, oh, there. I was going to say the processors are running really high, but they calmed down. So we're at 1.2 gigabytes now. GNOME and, and also um, KDE, they run quite high. And uh, I don't know why this volume is off here. Can I turn it on? Okay. But there is a way to make GNOME run better, and I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do is, um, let's do a search for Xterm again. I'm going to pin it. I'm going to right-click it and pin to the dock. There we go. And like I said, this is not going to be a video showing you how to use um, GNOME. But I'm just going to show you this because I want to show you how we're going to lower the RAM usage in GNOME. So I'm going to do sudo pacman dash r. I'm going to remove epiphany. And I'm spelling it wrong. Gnome console. I should spell it right. 
And the really the one thing that's really using a lot of RAM in GNOME, it's the GNOME Software Center. I don't know why you'd want to use the GNOME Software Center. Just go to the Arch Linux website and look up whatever uh, you want to download. And that's going to give you the name that you have to type in the computer. Type in sudo pacman dash capital S, leave a space, and type in the name of the package, and it's going to download it. I don't know why you need a software center. Anyways, I'm going to delete this GNOME dash software because that's using a lot of RAM. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to put my password in. And we're going to delete it. And it's done. So now I'm going to let's do an H top now and see if it lowered it. No, it didn't. Okay, so let's do a reboot. Reboot. Well, you can't see it. My face is blocking the numbers, but you can bypass the countdown by just hitting enter. And I'm going to type in my password. And we're going to log directly into GNOME, and it should be uh, lighter. Let's go into uh, Xterm. Let's make it full screen. Let's do an H top now. There we are. <laughs> Now, of the three things that I removed, the one thing that was using the most RAM usage was GNOME Software Center. And like I said, I don't know why you would need it. You can just go into the Arch Linux website, find what packages you want to use, find the name of the word that you need to use, to type in the terminal to download it, and download it. So we're running at... Uh, so you can see I have four processors, four gigs of RAM, no swap, and I'm running at 845 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty low for GNOME. I'm going to quit out of there. And we're going to log out. Log out. And we're going to log into KDE Plasma. I'm going to go into X11.1. And also with the KDE Plasma, I'm not going to show you how to use it or how to configure it, because that's really not what this video is about. I'm going to fix the display if it needs fixing, and it probably will because this is a virtual machine. Okay, so I'm going to skip this welcome screen, and I'm going to right-click it. Let's go to uh, display. Let's click it on here. Let's go to 1360 by 768, and apply it. And there we go. Let's keep it. And we are in KDE Plasma. And I'm just going to go to system settings. I'm not going to configure this. I'm just going to turn on the dark theme. And is my dark theme not working? Oh, i got to apply it. There we go. <laughs> oh, nice. I kind of like that. Now let's open up the launcher. Let's type in Xterm. And I'm going to right click it. I'm going to into task manager, which is really the doc. And now we're in the next term. Let's do an H top. And it's also running pretty high. It's running at 110 gig or 1.10 gig. Uh, now let's see if we can get rid of that. Oh, let's go back into X term. And I'm going to delete some programs here. I'm going to do sudo pacman r discover epiphany i don't know if it has the epiphany or not the epiphany and plasma firewall because i have uncomplicated firewall installed i'm going to delete those put my password in oh epiphany is not in there epiphany was came with gnome i'm just going to delete discover and plasma firewall now maybe you don't want to delete Discover because Discover is the KDE Plasma software center. And like I said, I don't know why you need a software center. Uh, just go to the Arch Linux web page, look up the app that you want to download, find out exactly what the name is for that app that you need to type into the terminal, type it into the terminal and download it. Anyways, let's hit enter. So, you know, you might not want to remove Discover, but I'm going to. And I'm going to reboot and see if that fixes the... Uh... And before I reboot, I'm going to turn off my face. Okay. 
Reboot. Oops. Reboot. And you're going to see the 10 second countdown. You can bypass it by hitting enter. Or you can pause it by hitting your arrows. And you can go to advance. And I'm going to log into the stable kernel. Oh, I should bring my face back, right? Keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> and we're going to. Oops, we're going to log into it. And there we are. We are in KDE Plasma. Now, let's open up uh, Xterm. And let's do an HTOP. See? Now we're running at 800 megabytes of RAM. So, when we removed, it's pretty much the same as GNOME. When we remove the uh, software app, it lowers the RAM usage. Now let's close this. Well, let's leave this open. Now, you might be saying, um, well, I used, uh, I don't like LightDM. Maybe you like the login manager or the display manager that comes with KDE Plasma. So let's see if it's installed. So we're going to do, uh, it should be, pack. Let's do uh, pacman, Q I S D D M. Oh, it's installed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do sudo system control disable light dm put my password in i'm going to do sudo system control enable sddm now i'm going to reboot okay and let's go into i want to go into the uh stable kernel there we are we're at the uh kde login manager or the display manager called sddm Put on the menu and you can see you can go to gnome Plasma, Wayland, Qtile, the awesome window manager, the Cinnamon desktop environment, all these different GNOMEs, GNOME Classic, GNOME on XOR, GNOME, Plasma X11, or Qtile. We had Qtile Wayland up here, and then we have Qtile down here. Okay? Now, let's go into GNOME. Let's go GNOME on XOR. And did my system freeze? Looks like I'm frozen. Oh, let's put my password in and see what happens. Hmm, that was a bit weird. So now we're in GNOME. And now you might be saying, but GNOME has its own display manager or login manager, and I like that, and I want to use that. So then you're going to go into the terminal. So right now we have it set to open with SDDM. And there's another thing I want to do before that. And it's a hassle. I'd rather log into the stable kernel. And it's a hassle going through all that. So I'm going to remove the long-term support kernel. I'm going to do sudo pacman r linux lts. I'm going to remove that because it's a hassle doing that. Okay, now we have to make rub. Now, if you're not using my zest configuration file, you're going to have to type out that long command to make grub. But if you're using my zest configuration file, you can just type in this command, mk grub. Like that. Hit enter, and we're making grub. Okay, now, so now it's, the long-term support kernel is gone, and it's gonna automatically boot into the stable kernel. So now what I wanna do is, sudo system control disable SDDM. And also, I want to make sure that um, the display manager or the login manager for GNOME was installed. Let's do Pacman. I should have done that first before disabling SDDM. So let's do Pacman QI GDM. And it's installed. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's clear the screen. Let's do sudo system control enable. GDM. And let's reboot. So you can see right here the countdown. 
Now, if you just want to bypass, you don't want to wait 10 seconds to hit enter. Oops, hit enter. There you go. I was on my other monitor. That's why. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to log directly into the stable kernel and we're going to log into it. Here we are. So now we are in the login manager or the display manager that comes with GNOME. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I log into the uh, other desktop environments? You could click this, click it on here. And, and is my face still off? It is, good. And you can see right here. See this little uh, doohickey here? Click it on. And there you have it. You have the awesome window manager, the Cinnamon desktop environment, GNOME, GNOME Classic, GNOME Classic on Xorg, GNOME on Xorg, Plasma Whalen, Plasma X11, Qtile, and Qtile on Wayland. Let's just leave it on GNOME. Okay, put my password in, and there we are. We're in GNOME. And just one more thing I want to show you. <laughs> so let's go into uh, Xterm. And let's make sure our firewall is on. Now my config, my auto app installed uncomplicated firewall and my run configuration file set firewall settings to be um, deny all incoming, allow outgoing and to turn on whenever I reboot. Let's make sure it's on. So let's do sudo uncomplicated firewall status. Put my password in and it's active. Now, if I want to see more information, I can do this one, verbose. So we can see it's active. The default is deny incoming, allow outgoing. And that's it. Wouldn't you know it? Like I said, when I turn off the camera to show one little thing so you can see it, so my face is not blocking it, I forget to turn it back on. In this video, I started off with a base install of Arch Linux with only root. And it was a replica of the video, the base install I did yesterday in my last video. And this time I used my GitLab repository and my auto install scripts to auto install the Cinnamon desktop the Qtel window manager, the awesome window manager, Firefox, and all my favorite apps. And I used my run script to copy all my configuration files into the system. Then I manually installed the KDE desktop environment and the GNOME desktop environment. And I showed you how to switch from using the login manager or the display manager LightDM to using the login or display manager that comes with KDE called SDDM. And to switch from that, to use the login manager or the display manager that comes with GNOME, which is called GDM. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.